The future of our lives, of our business, of society is very much in a networked world. If we think back to uh, the period which has been compared to the times today or coming up in the depression of the 30s, during that phase, economic structure barely changed at all. There was the same business activities were going on. There was really very little change. Whereas today, we are going to see, because of the connectivity, because of the network world, we will see the pace of change accelerate. And that is an extraordinary opportunity for those who will take it. So in the next 20 to 25 years, can confidently predict that the global economy will again double in size. And all of that growth, all of that growth in the economy for things that weigh nothing, ideas, information, knowledge, services, that is where the shift is coming. In this linking of knowledge, this linking of ideas, more faster and faster is what we can really think of as the birth of the global brain. The networks are literally coming to life. And as we are so connected, which is only just happening today, that is a real analogy. The people on the planet are as the neurons in a brain. And we are all participating in the emergence, the birth of a higher order life form. And I guarantee you, that in the challenging times ahead, if you stay within the existing boundaries of your business, of your industries, of your clients, the way you are perceived, you're going to find it very challenging. But as we are connected, that is exactly the opportunity where you can transcend those boundaries, to play with those boundaries, literally, to be able to move into new spaces, to be able to reposition yourself, to be able to take advantage of the opportunities. What are called scale-free networks? Now, a scale-free network is a network that has the same structure at any size, be it at a macro level or a smaller level. And this absolutely applies to the internet. So this particular image of a scale-free network could apply to any of those things, to social networks, to uh, the spread of disease, to infrastructure, to uh, life, to uh, thought, uh, to the internet. And these all have exactly the same struct underlying structure. This particular framework which uh, created recently on the future of the media life cycle, which looks at how content flows both through the how we consume that at home and how we consume that in the mobile space to create our personal clouds where we store information and that flows back, precipitates back into the sea of content. So this collaborative filtering is where the whole web is going, where this aggregation of this live streaming, that participation enables this infinite content to be made where we can find what is relevant to us. For the networks to come alive, we as people must interface directly into the networks. So Doug Engelbart invented the mouse 40 years ago. That is ancient technology. If you are using a mouse, that's antidiluvian. Everything can be replicated. Everything can be copied. So unless you are either innovating or able to protect that intellectual property, that value, the half-life of that value, disappears in a shorter and shorter time, as we've seen earlier. This is now innovation laid open, open around the world. And when I was consulting to Procter & Gamble uh, around these issues, I was looking to identify how do you find out where are the communities, where are the people who can contribute the ideas, how can you connect to these people to create this, the network of ideas, where again, that, moving beyond the technological networks and the social networks, is the network of ideas that are linking them out of which innovation flows. And unless you're plugged into that, you are an island and you are not able to participate in these networks coming to life. Social networks are ultimately about people being connected, you know, the, in these scale-free networks which we saw before. Now, if I ask you how an organization works, I often get an organizational chart, but the reality is that this is how organizations function. This is a study I did of a, a large Australian organization, the top 100 executives, looking at where there was communication, where there wasn't communication, the network structure of that organization, and as a result, where were the functions and the dysfunctions. Now, as we move into more and more connected, more and more transparent, more and more open world where information flows readily, our reputation precedes us. And as organizations and as individuals. So we are just on the cusp now of these more and more ways in which we can gain insights into you know, what our reliability is, what our competence is, 
you know, how uh, you know, valuable use we are in a particular context. So expect your reputation to precede you and expect to be able to gain insights into people's reputation before you meet them. Now, in, in my book, Living Networks, I describe what I call the, the flow economy. And the economy based on the flow of information ideas, what I described at the beginning as this weightless economy, everything that weighs nothing, is basically around the flow of information ideas. That's what your business is, and that's what you're assisting your, your clients with. And there are six elements of that. Standards, relationships, connectivity, interfaces, content, and services. And a, you know, a very powerful strategy tool is to understand where you are currently, what, you know, which elements of this you are participating in currently, who you are partnering with to be able to uh, create the other elements of this flow economy, and where you can shift into new areas. The law of requisite variety, back uh, Ashby Ross, 1958, basically says the only way you can control your destiny is to be more flexible than your environment. Today, your environment is very flexible, very fast moving, very fast paced. So your organizations must have the flexibility, the adaptability, which comes out of being able to tap the concepts of uh, how ants work and move to be able to create value, to be able to be effective and to win in this world. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you or your colleagues in, in organizations are, are like ants, but absolutely we can learn, again, looking at some of these principles of network science, to understand how ants collectively are creating quite extraordinary things. And these emergent properties of how they follow the pheromone tracks to be able to find where the honey is in your kitchen or to be able to uh, uh, work together to be able to create extraordinary structures. These are all based on the similar principles that are these, uh, you know, the Web2 style tools to be able to allow us to discover what is interesting, discover what is relevant, to be able to tap into and create value inside organizations. If you pin organizations down in process and workflow, they are commoditized, they won't be able to progress, they will be in boxes, they are within boundaries. Those that allow that emergence to come out by playing with that balance between structure and unstructure to be able to use the tools that allow these ideas to flow out, that's where value will be created. The pace of change is absolutely extraordinary and moving faster, and this is going to really literally explode over the next coming days, weeks, months, and years. So I invite you to build the future of the network economy. Thank you.